Welcome back to the second season of Space Pro Workshops. Our theme for this season is designing millennial homes. We have exclusive five master speakers who will be bringing to you five themes, namely Art Attack, Restyling the Living, Lighting up the Ambience, Amalgamation of Old and New, and Material Play and Layering of Space. This season is brought to you by Awesome. It is in fact an awesome feeling. Our world is getting smarter. Every day, every moment, we hear about smart homes, smart cities, smart infrastructure. The gadgets we use are becoming smarter too, like our phones, our TVs, our appliances. But have we ever stopped and asked ourselves, what is smart? Well, smart is anything which gives us convenience, that makes our lives less complicated, and which helps us become more efficient. But then, why are these so-called smart devices so hard to use at times? For instance, why are current smart homes with complicated wiring, complicated panels, complicated apps, and all of this just to turn on a light? Elderly people often find smartphones and their home automation apps very difficult to use. Uneducated people too, they have a hard time in decoding these. Why are our devices so discriminative in their behavior? Why only the privileged few who can use it? Maybe we don't live in a smart world that is portrayed to be. Smart should not just be easy to use, but also easy to execute, install, and maintain. What do you think? What is the way ahead for home automation solutions? After studying the current home automation market and the challenges faced by all its recipients, namely customers and their aspirations of home automation systems, products, architects, system integrations, contractors, local wiremen, etc., we've realized that though the aspiration of the end user is very high, their awareness regarding true home automation solutions is very minimal. Keeping these shortcomings in mind, we at Osum, our designing team, along with our technology partner, Smart Living, have developed a true automated IoT-based switch comprising a perfect blend of wired and wireless technology. This is a first of its kind switch in the world, which communicates via BUS, our own platform known as SL Bus, and Wi-Fi. All the relays, dimmers, servers, gateways, timers, etc., all of these inside a single switch. And guess what? It's a complete modular solution. It's completely retrofit. It's completely customizable. It's expandable. It's reversible. It's easy on the pocket as well. And not to mention, it's made in India. Awesome Smart Switch. Its key features are its plug and play. It doesn't need any centralized wiring or CAT6 wiring. It fits on a normal modular switch plate. There's no infrastructure cost of central controller. Even the bus wiring is just a simple one pair wire. It can be installed by any normal electrician. Some of its key functions are it has a built in dimmer and a fan regulator inbuilt time scheduler, 16C controls on a single switch, cloud control, complete AV integration, even from the wall controller, password protection per room. What all can it control? It can control lights, fans, curtains, door latches, air conditioners, heaters, water geysers, televisions, AV devices, water tanks, etc. It can even turn on non-smart gadgets into a smart gadget. All of these can be controlled via the wall switch as well as from the app and even remotely from anywhere in the world. Installing this is as simple as installing a normal conventional electrical switch. The only additional wiring needed for the bus communication is a one pair loop from one switchboard to another. It could be a localized wiring or central wiring. It's completely flexible. Also, we have a range of products to enhance your home automation experience. Presenting Verve the all-in-one smart switch to give your walls that extra luxurious look. Just a tap on the front or the side. It has 16 scenes control. Panache, elegant looking all-in-one smart switch for your walls. Osom aspires to take true home automation a notch higher with a future ready solution by leveraging on technological revolution called the IOT, the internet of things. The world is moving to IoT, the Internet of Things, more rapidly than one can imagine. And Osum is truly ready to be a name to be reckoned with. Osum adds a smart touch of magic to swiftly make IoT part of your life. To add this magic into your life, email us at info at osum.in. 
or visit our website at www.osum.in. Rhea Mehta. Rhea is one of India's leading luxury lighting and installation designers. Rhea has lit up spaces for nationally and internationally acclaimed architects, celebrities, and created large scale lighting installations from hotels ranging from five feet to 70 feet. She has studied product and spatial design from Esad Orleans, France, and interior and furniture design from MIT. We present Rhea Mehta. Hi guys. Uh, today, the topic I'd like to cover is lighting. Lighting is the most essential part of a space. It can basically make or break a space. And uh, if we know all the tips and tricks to use lighting in the correct way, we can make the most of it and we can really enhance our spaces. So let me just share my screen so we can dive right into it. So uh, let's start with um, some of my past work. So you all get an idea of what exactly we do with lighting. Um, this is basically a sculptural lighting installation that we created for Hotel Taj in Ahmedabad. It's a 35 feet uh, metal installation. It's inspired from the Ghagra and the Odni of the festival of Navratri. So this piece basically, this is one angle. Uh, it has uh, 3 lakh 50,000 crystals and all the crystals are hand woven intricately. Here you can see the crystals. And this is how the um, piece looks from the outside of the hotel. So it enhances the facade of the hotel and it's inside. So you can see it's a two-way sculpture. This is another piece that we made for uh, South Bay in Malabar Hill, Bombay. So this basically is a piece inspired from uh, the Queen's necklace in Bombay since uh, the building where this piece is kept uh, overlooks the Queen's necklace. That was the inspiration. So you can see how uh, the, the cityscape and the uh, water is entangling in one another, like the ocean entangles in one another and creates this form. And then we vertically placed that form and created this piece out of that. The third piece is the Bombay skyline for uh, our project. Uh, basically, we are uh, we started a series called the uh, Skyline series, where we are creating skylines for across the globe on custom orders. So we're already creating a skyline for Nepal. We've created a skyline for Ahmedabad, and this is the skyline for Bombay. Uh, so when we talk about lighting, we basically start with uh, understanding the space. So the best way to do that is working on a layout. Um, this is a project in Hyderabad. These are renders. So the client basically wanted a lighting in the center. As soon as this is the entrance, once you enter, the client wanted a chandelier. So we basically study the space and understand what are the possibilities and how we can basically use the space to create the chandelier. These are the different options of how we can use the space. We can either go organic all the way or in a geometric way, or we can have it in a circular, like a classic chandelier. Now, what's very important to understand is basically what task is going to be performed in the space. Um, what is the theme and the style of the space like? Um, what activities are going to be carried out? And is there any specification? So a lot of times, uh, a lot of architects do not have any lighting. So uh, say, suppose there's a dining area. And the architect says that I don't have any extra light. This is the only piece of light which has to be sculptural and has to be a task light. So um, because you're going to eat there and you're going to perform some kind of task and you need enough light for it. So that's how you design a piece accordingly. And sometimes there's enough light and this is just basically an accent, like a statement piece uh, that gives little bit ambient light. Um, also, when you're uh, designing a chandelier, it's very important to understand where the lighting points are and how many there are. Sometimes there's a large space to cover, but with only one lighting point. So you need to figure through where are you going to take the wiring so that it's concealed and it's not visible, but still it covers the entire area. This is another layout. It's for a bungalow in Bombay. Uh, these are the three main spaces that the architect wanted me to cover. 
this is basically the main spaces where tasks would be performed. And now we are going to integrate this entire thing into one uh, huge piece. So when we talk about lighting, so we I will talk about what we did finally with this uh, later on once I basically dive into what exactly lighting is and how you can use lighting in your space to enhance your space better. So basically light layering is the most essential part of lighting up a space. Once you know this, you can really make any space look amazing. So light layering has three types of lighting. One is ambient lighting. Ambient lighting is the base layer of light. It's the um, most general layer of light with, with which you have to make sure that there's no point or uh, space in the room which is dark. All the spaces need to be basically lit, but at a very general level. After this, the next layer that we add on this layer is accent light. So accent light is any light which is directional, which focuses on a particular piece. For example, if you can see these frames, there are these track lights which are focusing on them. So that creates emphasis on highlight. So once the ambient light level is set, you add the accent lighting. Then there is task lighting. Task lighting is basically light which helps us perform focused tasks. So any lighting in office spaces uh, or lighting above <clears throat> your countertop or lighting on the dining table, they're all task lights. Uh, task lights are usually uh, considered lights which help in detail tasks. So it's better if they are white, especially in offices, white or neutral lights or cooler lights, because these kind of lights make you more alert versus warmer lights make you more relaxed and cozy. So if you see over here, this is the chandelier. This is the amb ambient light in the space. The accent light is on the sculpture and enhances the sculpture. And these are the task lights, which help you read or perform basic tasks in the room. So uh, I've compiled some ideas where a light layering is used in different styles to light up your home. So this is a backlit stone. Basically, uh, translucent stones like onyxes can be backlit and that it may basically really gets the character of that stone enhanced. So this is an example of that. Another really uh, cool thing you can do with your space is by creating visual depth. So uh, there, there's a lot of times where a lot of houses don't have flat walls. They have like some uh, part of portion of the wall going in or some kind of leveling happening. If you don't want to lose out on that space and if you don't want to cover up that space, you can conceal that design flaw and in fact enhance it and make it a focal point. So like you can see here, if you just add a light and you add some kind of artwork or add some kind of a piece to look at, that flaw is gone and it suddenly becomes something that your eye actually goes towards. Also, you can enhance textures. So like you can see, this paneling just looks so much more beautiful by adding this one strip of light. You can enhance textures and add ambience at the same time. Highlighting details. So certain details you can highlight. So basically with lighting, what happens is that the portion which the light hits is highlighted and the portion which it doesn't uh, is dark. So that creates depth. And that really also enhances a space and enhances a detail. So here they've basically lit up this kind of um, part of the detail and left this not lit. And that's why it's making the entire detail look so much more beautiful. Backlit shelves. So if you backlight your shelves, you can add you know, pieces on it and basically enhance your pieces and make them uh, a visual corner. When you're doing that, you need to make sure that none of your LEDs or any fixture, the source should not be visible and it should be indirect lighting because as soon as the source is visible, the whole point of what we are doing goes away if, if it's not diffused because then it hurts your eye and then that takes away the focus instead of what you're trying to get the light to focus on. 
now uh, also basically wardrobes which are lit from within this is really important when uh, if even you're sharing your room with say a partner or with anybody where you don't want to switch on the light or use your phone to find stuff you just open your uh, wardrobe and the light is right there it's a very easy me mechanism where when you shut the door the light shuts uh, also people a lot of people use like translucent shutters for their wardrobes and then when you have these lights from within it really adds another layer to your uh, room you can also light up your staircase so instead of having like a dull staircase that goes up you can add some lights and enhance that entire area so then light layering basically becomes this in in this image this is the ambient light the track lights are focusing and are adding the emphasis and accent features. And this is the task light. Uh, with that said, let's focus on natural light. Natural light is one of the most essential parts about a lighting scheme as well. So um, no matter how much artificial light will advance and how beautifully we can light up our space, natural light, it can never compete with natural light. And um, basically, so how do we enhance and optimize natural light in our space? By having large windows and large doors, we can uh, try to get as much natural light in. Beside that, using the right color palettes. So lighter color palettes uh, make the space brighter because they reflect more light, while darker color palettes absorb light. And um, that's why they uh, do not basically reflect that much light and make the space look smaller. And uh, Beside that, you can also use uh, glossy and uh, uh, surfaces. For example, you can use marble instead of rugs because rugs or any matte surfaces basically absorb light and glossy surfaces uh, and finishes um, reflect light. Dimming and automation. Light intensity and light color is as important and essential as any other aspect of light. It helps sets the mood and sets the tone of the entire space. So with dimming, uh, you basically can increase and decrease the intensity of light. When you use light, which has high intensity, you can use it as a task light and the same light with a lower intensity can be used as an ambient light. Uh, and with light hues, what happens is that if we use light hues, which are cooler, it helps us focus and be more alert versus when we use light hues, which are warmer, it helps us relax and uh, basically wind down in a space. Uh, so companies like Awesome have lighting switches which are very minimal and beautiful looking and they also help with this dimming and automation. So just with the click of that one switch, you can basically set the mood of an entire ambient setting or you can set the mood of a task setting based on what task you're performing. So you can preset all the requirements that you have, which light you want to turn on, which light you want at a lower intensity and which you. And uh, that, that switch basically will get you that exact result the next time you press it again. So these are the uh, switches which are very sleek these days. <clears throat> and another way, uh, an important thing about light is cultural lighting and adding style and drama, which is basically what we do. Uh, this is one example of how you can make a space pop. This is another. So one of our projects in Hyderabad, our client wanted a very minimal uh, look. She basically uh, was using a lot of brass in her entire home. So we chose to go with brass so it, it matches and complements the rest of her furniture and the rest of her space. And she wanted something which was very minimal and but but very sleek and also adds a little bit style to the space. So we basically went with this. They are like falling shells and they're made with brass. So uh, the installation is going to be a bit bigger. This was like one initial drawing that we gave to the client. This is another concept for a home we're doing in Nepal. So this is a, the room for a daughter and she wanted something which changes light. So we've created this glass light. It's basically inspired from a very abstract flower. And every time you basically uh, change the color of the light, the entire installation and light changes color. Lighting trends. So what are the upcoming trends for the coming year? Refined industrial is one of the uh, 
trends which has been evolving through the years so initially it was just industrial where it was very uh, sleek very minimal very rustic looks and on the other end of things was luxury and refined material and finishes and polishes and now there's a new style coming in by the blend of these two which is refined industrial it's basically mixing one end of rustic and minimalistic and the other end of refined and uh, beautiful finishes together so these are the kind of fixtures that are really trending <clears throat> brass fixtures and matte black fi fixtures uh, these are the colors that are basically trending right now with lighting fixtures they are neutral they go with more spaces and they add that polish and refined edge to your space and sculptural lighting so through the years even sculptural lighting has become a big thing a lot of spaces now even design the space around the light um keeping light as the focal point in the space so um sculptural lighting is another trend which is not going anywhere anytime soon and now what are the important factors to consider when you're selecting a light for your space durability of the light that means that the light should be weather proof in whichever climate you're living in if you're living near the sea then you should make sure that uh, it basically sustains and doesn't rust and you need to make, ensure that the material that you're selecting is the correct material maintenance wise it's important that uh, your light is easy to service it's easy to clean it shouldn't happen that once you put a piece there and there's some servicing issue that uh, you know you can't open it again and you have to get the whole piece down it should be very easy to clean and maintain uh size and scale <clears throat> when de designing or selecting a light is very important if a light is too bulky it makes the space look very small and uncomfortable if a light is too small then it just doesn't add that much value to your space and um you need to also check the basic standards of a uh, height when you buy a chandelier because a lot of times chandeliers turn out to be very low when you get them in the space and then it's uncomfortable for people who are really tall even if it doesn't hit them it's just an uncomfortable feeling uh even when you're getting lights for like a dining area you need to make sure that you have it at the correct height it shouldn't hinder your view of another person and it shouldn't hit your head when you're trying to get something <clears throat> quality is very important it's very important to get the right fixture because eventually it's a, you want to have something that lasts you not just something that looks good right now and functionally um basically the functionality of the space that you are in if you need a lighting to add enough uh, luminosity in a space then you need to ensure that that fixture helps you perform the task that you're buying it for so uh, talking about sculptural lighting this is one of the pieces from our collection it's called the wim from the wave series this is how it looks in the dark this is the wave pendant lights floor standing lights this is basically the inspiration for the wave so we got inspired by the waves of arizona uh, which are basically rocks <clears throat> and here how you can see the light falling on the forms the same way light is falling on the forms in our piece so we've really studied in detail and done a lot of research on individual forms of the entire landform and we've tried to replicate that and bring that as a part in our piece so you can see how it's taking inspiration from the landform in all these four slides and that's it after this there is one more thing that i want to show you all which is the behind the scenes that go into the entire process so this was the behind the scenes for the project we did for taj but this is how much effort each piece takes and this is how much time it takes and this is how intricate all the work is for every piece that we do So this is it thanks so much guys
for listening and tuning in and thanks idac for having me it was a really great experience and thank you for doing these webinars and taking this initiative it was really great thank you so much hi riya thank you so much for an amazing workshop i think people had a lot of takeaways from the techniques and um, a lot of learnings on lighting especially for their homes i hope people send in more questions and really try and use your techniques at work and share it with all of us to see what's turned out of it what's most interesting for me is riya you've been designing not just for corporates residential clients a lot of a lister some of whom we love but um the part about getting into lighting design that's something that's always fascinated me and there're not that many people who really venture into something this unique so i'd love to hear from you how did you get into it and how's the journey been so far so uh i started it all started in college um uh, my i think first ever thing that i ever did with lighting was uh i collaborated with an italian designer we were both still in college uh, at the time and we came up with a light mixing two cultures the indian culture and the italian culture and we it was for a competition and we ended up winning the competition so i think that was my first uh, you know glimpse of what lighting was and that was just the start after that um, i did a couple of internships and um, my final de uh, design project was to design come up with a range of furniture or anything that i like so i started researching and i was like what's the one piece of furniture that stands out that is the most unique that doesn't need anything more to it and while doing my research i was like of course it's light because you can't miss it it has it's um it has so much to it it's giving out so much like there's no way you can miss that in a place and i started researching more and that's when i came up with my first range okay it started with a college project and then even when i started working i started really focusing on statement pieces and lights and that's when i realized that you know this is my niche and then i took it from there that's lovely that's a great story and any piece particularly from your collection that's your favorite or a project that's your favorite so it has to be the whim it okay. was one of my first pieces and i spent so much time developing the forms that i think it's uh, going to be it, it's going to be very close to my heart because it was one of the firsts and do the rest of your collections or maybe some of the pieces kind of branch out from the same design language as the whim so i try not to let that happen because if once you get stuck to a design language it's just uh, then you're not you're not growing so every time i start a new design like i tell myself what different am i doing here and how am i breaking my own boundaries in this project and yet how do you manage to keep the riya mehta signature on it going so i think that i have started really loving organic forms through the journey even though i don't just stick to that so every and every time there's a client there's always a new uh, kind of take everyone wants a different thing but at the end when it just feels right like when you feel like okay yeah this is it i'm okay to put my name here that's when i go ahead yeah. and i go ahead very like i'm very strict with myself with that No I'm sure we love all the pieces that you churn out and we're looking forward to seeing more. Thank you so much Ria. Thank Hi. you for being a part of this and uh, I can't wait for everyone to listen to your workshop and share their takeaways. Thank you so much Pearl. Thank you Idak for having me here and it was great talking to you Pearl. Hi this is Sachin Motwani from Awesome Smart Electrical Solution. we have been engaging in manufacturing of electrical switches uh, for the last 52 years now electrical industry has not really transformed for the first 45 odd years we made mechanical and electrical switches like everybody else however awesome took a giant leap uh, a few years back uh, the way uh, we designed our new switch it's like jumping from almost like a landline to the iphone era the way we use lights or the way we've been using lights in indian homes have changed drastically earlier i remember as a kid we only had tube lights in our homes each room just had one or two tube lights and one fan and that's about it but now the modern homes with the uh, various different lighting fixtures or the amb ambiens that we want to create we need a really different kind of dimming controls the leds uh, have now come in in various color sh shades 
right from your warm white to cool white. Various different lights uh, can be controlled in various different ways to create different lighting ambience. For every task, we need a different kind of light. Earlier, it was always just all on or all off. Now for different tasks, like when while we are watching TV, we need a different kind of ambience. While we have guests at home, we need a different lighting ambience. While we're reading a book, we need a different lighting ambience. So how do we control these things? We need smart controls. Uh, until now, the smart controls were either imported from US or from the European markets, and they were not really designed for the Indian homes. They really needed a lot of complicated wiring, a lot of backend servers and controllers and things like that. We at Awesome have now designed the world's first smart switch with hybrid communication. Now, I don't want to use too many uh, jargons here, but in a, in a very uh, layman's language, it's a switch which feels like an electrical switch, but at the same time, it functions really differently as well. Now, an elderly person at your home can use the switch like he or she used to, but a teenager or a, um, or a young couple will use it in a very different way. So the same switch can be used in multiple ways. Now, when we create a, a switch, <clears throat> we now replace it with a scene controller. So multiple switches get replaced with one scene controller. Or with one scene controller, we can have 16 scenes. So 16 lighting scenes can be created with one switch or one scene controller, as we call it. Now, not only they take very less space, but they can uh, really improve the aesthetic of your home of, or your living space because they come in really premium finishes. They come in different shapes and they, they're not as bulky as what we've been using for the last, you know, so many years. Lighting really changes the ambience. Now, if you dim the lights, the mood, the entire setting uh, can really transform. The focus light, when it works on its own, can really highlight the painting that you have at home. Or for that matter, when you really dim the lights, yeah, even your uh, entire home feels very warm. That's why uh, we really we think awesome switches are now almost a necessity at home. Our switches can not only control various type of uh, dimming controls like DALI, analog and face cut. We can have all these three even on a single platform. This is again a world's first. What kind of wiring do we need? Either you can have your regular wiring or a centralized wiring. We can work with both. So we have really taken the uh, restriction that one had before. And we've given a lot of freedom to architects and interior designers. And we can help you control any kind of lighting. We can help you uh, light up the whole house with a simple uh, lighting um, control or even if it's a complicated solution, we can design it for you. Isn't that awesome? Sanya Kantawala. Moving forward with the ideology that the mind is a gifted tool with various layers of visions. So why stick to one? Sanya has spearheaded a diverse range of projects that include high-end retail outlets to boutique hotels. As an interior designer, Sanya strongly feels the need to incorporate art forms inspired from India's diverse cultural heritage in design while aiming to enhance user well-being. By creating thoughtful designs that foster a positive and nurturing environment, Sanya believes we can effectively enhance the quality of life. Hi guys, this is Sanya Khan and I'm going to be talking about material layering today. Uh, material layering is something that is very important for us designers when we are closing up a space. It also is possibly the first stage of the project when we are conceptualizing our space and we implement this process in every step of the way when we are going by the entire project. Today we're going to show you two, two very distinct projects that um, talk about material laying, layering, but the materials that we've used in both these projects are so different from the other. That's why we thought it would be very apt to show two very distinct projects to you guys. 
in order to explain you the process of how we can layer materials in the best way possible for any of the projects that we do. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen right now. So guys, the first project that we're going to talk about today is a country house and it is situated in, our, in one of our two star cities and it's next to Nagpur. This one is named as Villa Serene. Uh, the reason why we named this project as Villa Serene to begin with is because this entire space is located in um, and is just surrounded by greenery and nothing else. Uh, the furthest or the closest the closest road that you have next to this villa is about two kilometers away. So uh, there is nothing but serenity around the space. And um, that's why we choose this as the first project to showcase it to you guys. Uh, I'm going to start with a simple plan uh, for explaining you guys what was the intention behind this entire process of planning stage. So if you see the entrance area is through this really long lobby area that you see. Now, the reason why there's a long lobby area is because the, uh, the client wanted a very long passageway to walk through. He wanted a grand entryway, but he also wanted a long entryway. This was a zone layout already given to us and we were not allowed to make any changes. He required two doors, which is the main door. And after that, you also have a second door over here that takes you through inside the space. The main door is used for the staff so that the staff can walk through directly to the first floor. Since this uh, entire villa has two floors built and the total square footage of the space is 3,200. Today, we're gonna to be explaining you guys the ground floor. If the staff area have to walk through the staircase, the people living in the house can just move in from the main door and go directly through the second door. They can also use the staff area space, but they would prefer going from the inside door. And that's why there has been a second door that has been created. Sorry. That has been created for them. Um, once you enter the second door to the left is your living. If you keep going straight, you have your dining and to the left is your kitchen, which is connected to the puja for Vastu purpose. If you go right from your dining area, here is the master bedroom. And if you go back to the passage area and take a right, there is our guest bedroom. So today we're going to be talking only about the rooms and not the bathrooms. So when we talk about material play, we'll be concentrating on three, four major rooms. That's going to be one, the living room, the dining bedroom, the dining room. Um, the master bedroom and the puja room. So as we move along, this is the rendered layout for the entire space, which has the entryway. Uh, we wanted to create a drama for the entire flooring as we see over here. And that's why we created a pattern that creates all the drama. We use two tone tiles. One was a sandstone finish tile and the second one was a printed tile. Why did we use such tiles? We wanted to create drama and material layering is all about drama. So we knew that we had to add more to the drama. So we added a third layer, which became our arches. So as you scroll down over here, I'm gonna actually first go to the 3D render and then come back to the mode board. This becomes our entire archway. So what we've done is to add the third layer of drama is we created these long arches. We have about five of them that walk through the entire passageway. So when you enter the space, you enter a space of a grand entryway, which has a passageway of a depth of more than four feet. And then you can walk through the entire space and then move into the zone that you need to. Now that we can see, we're seeing printed tiles, we're seeing sandstone finished tiles, and we're seeing lime plastered walls. So what has been done over here, there's a balance of materials. We've also added a fourth layer, which goes underneath our archway. So we've added black tiles, glossy black tiles. Why glossy? To create basically a contrast between matte and well definition between the lime plaster and the glossiness. So we have also added this fourth layer, which basically comes into the arches. So as you see, the entire space has drama on the flooring, and then it is 
simple on the walls that we have not overdone the walls we just kept simple lime plaster and then to add a little more to the layering we created seat uh, seating of the same material that we've used on the flooring so basically we've taken the printed pattern tile and you will see this printed pattern pattern splashed all across the ground floor because we wanted a continuity of this print all across the space so over here we see it in our pebble sitting and we also see it on our floor we have to go back to our layout. We can now um, just understand the entire mood and palette of the space. If you see that this entire house is basically a monochromatic space and a monotone space, we've used very earthy colors. We've used materials that are very organic. We've used only local materials that are found only in Amravati and nowhere else. We've not imported any materials except certain tiles that we did not find over there. And hence, when we look at this mood board, we see a very earthy palette. As you see, you can see to the right the pebble seating that we've incorporated in our archway. We use jute rugs for the dining area. Again, a very organic material. We've used lime plaster instead of paint because we had to balance the materials and we could not make the space extremely dark at the same time. The bedding, we've used teak wood for the dining chairs and we've used cane for storages. We've also used a particular pattern, which you see all across the space, is the white and black cowshed pattern, which you will find in the dining area, archway, and even in the living room, and some bits of the bedroom. There's also another pattern over here that you see on top, to the right hand side on top, which is Victorian red pattern, which we've used in the master bedroom. So all in all, when you see this entire mood board, you basically see nice materials that are rooted, they're organic and easily and locally found across Amravati. If I have to move on from the passage area and the mood board, we can now come into our living room. In the living room, we use micro concrete. Again, it is locally available. And over that, we have layered the space with a jute truck as a contrasting element. But what happens is it's harmonized and blended with the space instead. Over the jute truck, we used another material which is easily locally available, and that is a teak wood. And then we got custom furniture made, again, locally made in Amravati itself. So let's talk about the 3D render of the space. Again, the entire walls are finished with lime plaster. We've just changed the shade and we've added a tint to the lime plaster, but the entire wall is uh, palleted with lime plaster. We've layered it with three layers. The first layer is our lime plaster. Second layer is our teak wood. And the third layer is our custom lighting. Then we, in front of it, we have sofas, which are custom. We also have a center table and an ottoman. To add to the layering, we've added two more layers, which basically are planted to the right and a custom light to the left, which becomes our floor plan. We've kept the flooring extremely simple because we wanted the entire space to ooze serenity because that's at the end of the day name of the villa as well. So one option that we gave our client was a very simple, serene option, not being too uh, bold with our materials, but being very calm, serene and subtle with our materials. But alongside this, we thought that what if our client wants something more? So what we did was we added another option for them um this is a part of the dining area that we see uh, from a zone which is near the arch area uh, you will see the crockery cabinet you will also uh, notice that the prints that we had on the flooring in the archway is replicated on the crockery unit and also on the wallpaper creating drama We've done this because the palette is so subtle throughout the space. So to add a sense of continuity into the drama, we've added this as a wallpaper on top of the ceiling. We've kept the tones again very muted over here and have used just some plants that are kept around the space. Art will be added to the walls and the walls again remain as lime plaster so that there's a continuity from the archway to the dining area. Coming a little lower, now you see the other side of the space. So you'll see two arch doors that lead up into the kitchen. What we've done over here is we have, instead of giving a boring little arch, which is glass as a glass door, 
uh, we've added canvas and we've basically um, spray painted paint over it on one side on the other side there's brush strokes of paint again adding drama to the space so instead of making the space super subtle and serene which it is we've added some bit of drama because this house is catering to a young audience so at the end of the day they did not want to live in a very boring environment they want to live in an environment that has some sense of creativity and keeping the youth alive as well we're going to move down and come to the master bedroom plan as you see the materials over here we work with angles in the master bedroom however there are two plans that you see over here one is the current layout and one is an old layout in the current layout it is facing one window at the back while in the old layout it faces the two windows on the side but due to vastu we had to eventually change the uh, the format as per the request of the client um now as you see we've played with materials in a very um in a very systematic way over here because we've played with angles so we've taken simple maroon tiles and we have uh, paired it up with a really pretty print which is a victorian print uh, why victorian because our client um, along with serenity loved some bits of english and victorian prints coming into the space that go well with the entire home um so we instead of adding just a print splashed across the entire floor we instead used a balance with plain tiles and print tiles and we divided the room into angles and over those palette of the print and the plain tile we added the bed the side table and the ottoman all the colors are contrasting to each other but when you see it coming together it just comes together as one palette so we have to move into the render it's a very simple space you have white white washed walls you have the entire print which is coming in um across on the two borders and you have the maroon tile which is in the center the same print that you see on the tile on the floor is the print that we've got on the ottoman as well which is in front of the bed so we created it and customed it into a fabric and we had it splashed on one side of the ottoman the bed is made with teak wood again but has sage green color washed over it and the victorian print that the client wanted is also used as fabric inside the side tables so it's a very dull victorian maroon that you see in inside the side tables the contrast to this maroon is the sage green you will also find a custom light that we have layered right in the corner of the room which has been designed by us and uh, eventually would be placed in the space as well over on top of this we're going to layer the space with drapes as well so that this entire room is summed up together with minimal layering but contrasting materials and colors so this was the um so this was the bedroom and hence i will be summing up villa serene um by showing the contrasting and orga organic materials that we worked with over here so this particular project is in lodha alta mountain mumbai and it's a complete contrast to the earlier project that we showcased if the earlier project was talking about organic tones and wood as a material in this project we're talking about glam tones and metal as a material hence making these two projects extremely opposite to each other and also oxymoronic in a way um lodha alta mount is a sobo centric space it is designed for an individual who is a woman who's going to be staying in this space and is going to be breathing in this environment it's a 1500 square feet space and it's a 3 bhk house um the entire space is modulated and custom and designed for a particular personality that basically breeds and lives in an environment that has everything to do against her needs and wants so uh if we have to just walk you through this space uh this is the main entrance door as you see from the private lobby that she would have the main entrance door moves you into this huge living room which has a console that breaks in as a partition 
and in front of that it has a dining table with eight chairs why eight chairs because she entertains a lot and she would also have her family coming home um, many a times and so she would want a dining table that caters to at least eight covers from there we move into this living space which basically has a round sofa because because that was her dream she always wanted a round sofa and because the entire space overlooks the skyline of mumbai since the entire house is glass glazed which is very rare to find in a city like mumbai especially when it's a residence it's nice to have the sofa facing the entire view if you have to walk a little inside and talk about this entire her entire bedroom her entire bedroom is not called a master bedroom but it's called an au suite or a master suite why like that because her in her bedroom is basically only to sleep and only to get ready she doesn't have a television in her room and nor does she want to have anything that distracts her in her bedroom apart from her sleeping habits her bedroom is tiny however she has two side tables and one king size bed the wardrobe starts from her bedroom and extends all the way to the other side in the master suite where she also has a study and also an area where she could do her yoga she would could also turn this into an office so it's a dual it's a double it's a double duty space or a multi purpose space her wardrobe is long and is nearly 20 feet long because she wants to have all sorts of things in her wardrobe that contain from her shoes her bags to her clothes her bathroom is a space where she does not like to spend too much time she is extremely quick and just a shower cubicle is what she wanted so all you have in her bathroom is a wc a wash basin and a shower area If you have to get down, get out from her master bedroom, we can move into her deck area. But her deck area can also be accessed from her master bedroom. Later, we'll also be adding a door here, just in case she does not want the deck area directly into her master bedroom. But that is something that is left to deliberate with her because she likes the openness of the entire space right now. If we have to get out from the space, she also has a seamless storage over here, which will be cladded with marble, so that the entire space looks seamless, as marble has been used on all the walls. She has a little kitchen over here where her staff would be utilizing the space. Coming out of the kitchen, we move into the guest bedroom where you have two queen size beds for her guest. You have a coffee table with two seaters, again facing the view, a wardrobe with a television in the center. um so this is the layout of her space which is then rendered with layered materials now to just explain you or give you a brief into how we have layered her materials her space is absolutely seamless so instead of using different materials in different zones how we showed you in the earlier space where we used sandstone we used printed tiles we used terrazzo and more things of that sort we now have a space which has only white marble greek tiles splashed across the entire space we have no other material except for the bathroom and the deck area so her guest bed bedroom living room and the master suite even her kitchen has one flooring and that is white greek tiles over the white greek tiles we have layered different formats for example dining chairs are also white they are white suede reggiano chairs then we have a nice reggiano brass table because she has she loves metal uh we have a nice round sofa which would be coming in from italy and that one is going to be of this company called desforma we have an ascendo dining table so i'm going to get into the layering of these materials now so that you can you guys can understand how we have layered all the patterns so this is the living room as you see uh we have the white greek tassos which is the first layer of our flooring over the first layer as i said she loves metal so we use a lot of metal in her space and we have also used a lot of marble because she loves natural tones of marble so the first layer is the greek tassos the second layer of the space in the sofa area is our rug which is again in a very muted palette and we're not overdoing it with colors because the marble which is around it is very overpowering balance materials here. we balance the materials here by going a little undertone so we used a nice 
big plush rug which comes under the sofa area the sofa then has a skirting of brass that comes with our sofa and then we have a white suede sofa with white cushions put over the sofa so that it sums up the space well uh we have the ascendo marble table right in the center between the sofa and the two single seaters we've done this because she's always wanted a feeling of a bonfire when she's sitting on her sofa so we had to lit our center table so we took the natural material of ascendo which is a marble and um, it's not just a marble it's also an onyx so it's basically an onyx and a marble coming in together so the onyx bit of it always lifts up so in the night when she wants a cozy atmosphere she wants to look into her skyline and she wants all the lights off she just has to switch on this particular centerpiece and she has a bonfire going for her next to her center seating she also has a noctambule light which is by floss this just adds a bit of a sophistication that is moving across the space let's move to the dining area if you'll notice we've not added dining chairs because when we made this 3d render at that point of time we had not locked our dining chairs uh we would be adding however frilled reggiano chairs which are beautiful in nature and again they are white so that it goes with the entire palette of the space so as much as we layered materials in our previous projects we are minimizing materials in our current project this project has a lot of brass work because she loves brass she loves brass installation she loves brass legs she loves brass tables so we try to balance the tones with white and brass so that it all works together at the same time still giving her what she wants we've used an art installation here which is by nitan thirlekar from mutation lab he's going to be creating this entire john and ginormous piece for us There's no light about it. It's just a nice art installation. If she wants some lights, we're just gonna give her spotlight so that it all reflects on her table. Her table has brass legs and it has a console in front of it. If you look behind the sofa, you will see that there are roll paper patterns, and there is indirect lighting behind it. This is basically the partition which is adjacent to her guest bedroom. So her guest bedroom is actually behind this partition. And if you notice over here, this is the door that leads into her guest bedroom. So the space basically is um, an O to rolling paper because uh, earlier we were going to put um, a Shaparo art piece coming over this roll paper, and Shaparo works with crumpled paper. so it was an o to uh, so the entire wall was an o to paper so we may or may not be adding that however this panel remains we've used only muted tones with the panel we've not gone eccentric with the panel stones because the wall which comes on the other side which you see as this entire green mist marble is a very eccentric op uh, a very eccentric op opulent piece that is spread across all the other walls of the living room all the doors are seamless and are clad in marble so when you open up the marble you're actually entering another room but you're entering through a marble piece so it makes the space very interesting and has very minimal layering yet it creates a statement if we have to room a uh, move into the master bedroom just to explain you guys this door that you see over here would be clad in marble so the entire wall and the door is completely clad in marble it is you will not know that there is a door over there but when you open it you're entering into a completely different realm when you look into this bedroom all you see there's a bed two side tables a dining or uh, sorry there's a dressing vanity and there is a rug so if we have to look into uh, the 3d render of it again the first layer of our flooring is the greek thassos the second layering or layering of our flooring comes a rug we are going to decide which rug we're going to choose but for now it's a muted palette rug the walls have paneling because she loves paneling so we've used castelli metal panels and we've used fabric as well so we've used a coal material and we've used a warm material that's also how you can layer your space so when you have a coal material on the floor you can use a warm material above it at the same time if you have a coal material on your wall you can have a warm material in front of it or on the side of it you know you can keep playing with materials the um, um the possibilities are absolutely endless so we've used two tones in this bedroom as you see it's beige and it's white and and the only tone that we have used to 
plump up or pop up the space are the muy flaw or muy lamps that you see, which are in the shades of blue. And then there's a muy light, which is on top of our bed, which adds that extra drama, but at the same time also has a sense of femininity within this room, which she anyways wanted. So as you see, it's a small space and hence we have used light tones to balance the space well. On the left hand side of the room, you will see that there's a vanity. This vanity is basically made with white mosaic and the fabric is by Tresseri. Uh, we use the white mosaic even on the drawer. It's a very, very girly vanity. She would love, I would love to sit on it uh, in front of it, get ready. You have the skyline of Mumbai to your right, even to the back. So there's ample of natural light coming in. So there was no need to layer the space too much. We just had to use a rich fabric. We're using mosaic on the side, which also, uh, by the way, our storage is. She just has to push it and it opens up into her entire vanity storage. And then she has a drawer in, her cent uh, in the center, which she can again use for extra storage. She has a bit of lighting, which comes with the mirror. So um, she has ample of lighting as well well to get ready. So this becomes a vanity which is inside her bedroom. Let's move into the ensuite, her, which is basically her multi-purpose area for her office and for also utilizing it as a yoga room, workout room, dressing room, however she wants it. It's a, it's a complete double duty space. When she approached us with this space, she said that I need the space to still have a sense of commercial space into it, which means that I could not make this space look entirely like a home or entirely like a creative room or an art room. It had to look like an office. She would be sitting in, uh, on the chair in front of her study. Uh, with maybe a Zoom call that would be open. So a lot of her staff and team members would be looking in what is behind her. So the space had to have some form of a commercial value. It could not be too artsy and decorative. Hence, we gave her a mirror and we just put in grids with the mirror to make it look of more commercial value. At the same time, it does not take away from the glam element that she wanted in her space. Her favorite material, materials like brass are still a part of the space. She still has a beautiful, lovely centerpiece which acts like her chandelier. Again, we have layered the flooring with a beautiful rug and the entire space has only two colors, three colors, white, brass and black. And that's how we have summed up this entire working space. If you see at the corner end of it, there's also a bounce chair, which is a fun, playful chair. So if she just wants to sit with her laptop on her, on her knee, on her leg, she can do that as well. At the same time, at the same time, enjoying the entire view of Mumbai. If you have to move on from here, we should move into the guest bathroom, which is very simple. It's just a simple gray marble. And over here next to it, we've used stainless steel, but we used a pixelated pattern. So it's actually a stainless steel mirror finish that's going to be coming over here. And it's going to be reflected even in the partition, which moves into the shower area. We've used Jesse fittings and we've given storage to her as well. Um, in the guest bedroom, we have we have continued the palette of the guest bathroom. We've used gunmetal for her guest bedroom. So instead of now that we've used brass in the other areas in the guest bedroom, we've used gunmetal, giving it a more masculine feeling. So there's gunmetal at the back at the head of the headboard in the guest bedroom. At the same time, it also is there in the false ceiling. So instead of having a large chandelier. We've given a false ceiling with gunmetal sheets so that it adds some drama into the space. We balance the tone with uh, fabric, which comes in the BB Italia seats. Uh, we've used custom print over here, which basically is a part of the rug, which is also there in her office area. We've replicated that print into the guest bedroom as well. So there's some form of continuity throughout the space. As I said that we've used gunmetal over here, which also replicated on the art pieces on the left hand side of the wall. And with it, we have a contrasting brass oxidized brass piece to show that these are the two predominant materials that we have used across the space. 
So um, yeah, this is the guest bedroom. The layering of this bedroom is again a simple way. Add a rug on top of it. With the rug, add another contrasting material. In uh, in this case, we've used wood with white poly uh, polyurethane coating on it. Uh, we've used gun metal as a contrasting material to the white marble, and we've used soft tones in fabric, which come in our seats and in our bedding. If we have to move on, a very very interesting space. It's her deck area. This is another area where I've used another material floor for her flooring instead of um, Greek thassos. We've used an azul. An azul is a sheet of marble which can also be illuminated if need be. But in this case, we've given her a periphery light. Now, when we look at balconies, we usually what do we usually take? We take a um, coffee table. We maybe add a stool with it. We maybe add a swing with it. Maybe we add two chairs with it. In her case, since she has such a beautiful view of the skyline of Bombay, we created a day bed. Something unusual to layer over a flooring in the deck area rather than going with pieces that can be easily moved around. The reason why we did this is because she has a lot of girlfriends that come over to her space. So when she is talking to them, they all like to sit on one bed and talk it out with maybe coffee on the side, on a tray or in the center. So this particular space created a, creates a very environment and also lets all of them sit in the same area together. And it's also something different rather than using the usual loose furniture that we use everywhere in balconies and terraces across Bombay. We've layered the back of the wall with a movie pigeon light and we've created an electric blue column in, as a contrasting material to the azul, which is on in the bottom. So the colors are contrasting in nature, yet they blend together really well. And over the blue column, we have landscaping because why not? Plants are never less in any home. We've added a floor lamp, which we may change to another artistic element, which we, which we feel is appropriate for the space. But for now, it's the day bed and the lamp coming in together. Lastly, I'm going to move to the lobby area, which is the last area I wanted to show, even though it's the entrance of the home. This is because this is the area that uh, is just something that continues with the entire space and basically gives you an entrance into the space telling you that these are the two major materials that are being used in the space. One is the Greek Thassos marble, which you see in the bottom. Two is the Satvario cladded walls. Three is the brass that we're using throughout the space in the layering. And four is the Ombre Castelli sheet, which you see as our main door. So the main door is basically going to be changing. In fact, we're using electric blue now instead of black, but it creates a form of eccentrism, which she wanted in the space. At the same time, it makes the space look seamless because the lift lobby's material is, um, is merged and is paired up with the door's material. So there is not contrasting, uh, there is no contrasting palette over there. The palette remains seamless. At the same time, the white is just flowing from in to out or from out to in. So yes, uh, the first is all about wood and organic tones and going on layering one piece of the other, even if it may be contrast, even if it is coming together. While in this particular space, we have used metal as our main, um, as our main champion material. And with metal, how we have minimized stones and kept it extremely simple. At the same time, it creates a huge statement as a glam home. Mm -hmm. So this was our presentation over the glam loft. And on the other side, we had Velocerine, two very contrasting projects. Uh, I'm sure you guys may have a lot of questions because the projects were so contrasting in nature. So if you guys have any projects about layering of materials, please feel free to reach us out on our website. Uh, we have a small box which says message and you can ask us whichever question or you can write down your questions over here and we'll be happy to answer it. Our projects usually, um, usually always contain uh, a lot of material layering because we're so passionate about a palette layering and material layering. So any question in regards to that, we would be happy to answer you.
Hi, Sanya. Thank you so much for talking about materials, material play, and giving us examples through your projects and um, your experiences with clients in the past. You know, every time a client comes, the first thing, especially for a residence that they talk about, is that feeling of warmth, that homeliness. And the one element that does it is the materials, the fabrics, and the upholstery in the house. So I think one of the sessions that have happened today, yours seems to be one of the important ones, really talking and highlighting to something that everybody loves to discuss. With materials, I think the amazing part is we've got the advantage of having two types, some that are a little more permanent and some that can be changed as seasons go by. So thank you so much. I hope the workshop has everybody to really, you know, have a lot of takeaways happening. Um, while that's happening, Sanya, one thing I have to mention, so everybody that isn't following her on Instagram already really yeah. has to get on there. Um, I un understand where the sense of humor and the vibrancy comes in. Her recent posting, Mirror Coming Soon, I think was such a clever play. Instead of getting upset with COVID and not, you know, really being able to tackle it, I think you handled it beautifully. And I hope the clients understood your sense of humor as well. Um, while this is happening, Sanya, if you were to pick a couple of uh, materials or Sanya's ideal color palette for your house, what would something like this be? So when we talk about homes, the first feeling of a home to me and to a lot of other people is warmth, comfort and just being cozy inside your environment because as you are working, you are working in a space where you have everything happening around you. There are like 50,000 things happening at one go. So what is the one space that you go back and you are warm, you want to snuggle into it? That is your home. So how does a home need to be? A home needs to be warm. It needs to be cozy. It needs to be your comfort zone. So obviously, one of the most important materials that we work with is wood. Um, alongside wood, we do like working with natural materials like stones. And stones, we love working with marbles. We love playing with even organic Rajasthani stones that we get in our country. And our country is so rich with these Indian stones that I feel designers today have the endless possibilities to work with these stones. So we love experimenting with such materials. We also like playing with concrete. Maybe not the best material for our environment, but it still gives that sense of warmth. It's a cool material, but when layered well, which I talk about in the presentation, it can turn into a warm material. So yeah, for me, don't have to be more organic in nature. But then again, when we are designing for a client, it all depends on the context and the narrative that a client gives us. And then how we turn their materials and layer it with warm materials, that's the challenge that we like to overcome. Thank you, Sanya. And it's really impressive that you're studying materials just beyond their look, feel and appearance. And you're actually going into the science behind each of it. Mm -hmm. um, I hope everyone has a lot to take away from your talk and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. See Thank you. you. Hi, this is Sachin Motwani from Awesome Smart Electrical Solution. We've been engaging in manufacturing electrical switches for the last 52 years. For the first 45 odd years, we were making the normal electrical mechanical switches like everybody else. But in the last five, seven years, we at Awesome, we've taken a giant leap and manufactured and invented a smart switch uh, unlike anywhere else. It's almost like a leap from a landline to the iPhone era. Now, why do we need these smart switches, one, uh, one may ask, right? Because we've been using switches um, for the last so many years. However, today's home, we really are seeing really fantastic homes. We, uh, and especially now in COVID times, we have different spaces for different kind of tasks. Different kind of lighting or cluster of lighting can really define that particular space or a different task can be done even in the same space with different kind of lighting. So we at Awesome, we've designed this electrical switch or a smart switch unlike anywhere else. These switches can help you uh, create different layers or different uh, ambience in the same space, which is very, very important. At the same time, we've kept our wiring requirement to the bare minimum with the regular wiring or even with centralized wiring whatever it may be we can use the same switches and give you 
the entire automation not only uh, for lighting we can even control your curtains we can control your air conditions right from vrv ac to your uh, window ac and split ac hence we we can give you this uh, multiple ways of using the same space we can create different layers with different kind of controls with lights on and curtains shut or with dim lights with air condition on you can really transform the same space into a different uh, ambience altogether not only our switches can be controlled manually it can have your one touch control we can even give you app control we can give you voice control isn't that awesome